Hello again, Tyler here. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to uh, set up and configure a UT55A Yokogawa controller to work in a temperature simulation loop. Here in my hand, I have the world's smallest industrial process. Uh, contained herein, you will find a temperature transmitter, a final control element, and a probably steam exchanger or some type of vessel that relies on temperature. We are going to connect this simulator uh, to the inputs and outputs of our UTA, uh, UT55 controller and it will allow us to simulate a temperature control loop. So without further ado, um, let's get to wiring this thing up to the controller. Okay, because this uh, temperature simulator relies on a uh, thermocouple uh, which provides a millivolt uh, output, we are going to be connecting it to the millivolt in terminals of our controller and we're going to connect the other two wires to the uh, controller output which is milliamps. So here we have our controller and we are going to uh, connect the wires as follows. Take the white wire and put it underneath the common lug and the black wire under the positive lug. The yellow wire will go to our output common and the red wire will go to our output positive. And that's all there is to wiring up our little simulator here. So we now have to walk through the parameter settings for temperature which will be slightly different than the basic uh, milliamp in, milliamp out uh, parameter settings that we did in the previous video. So okay, here we have our temperature simulator wired into our controller panel. Uh, red and yellow wires on the controller output, which will be milliamps, and our black and white wires, which are millivolt input from the thermocouple uh, hooked up as so. Uh, from this point, we are going to want to now turn on our Yokogawa controller or plug it in and then see how our parameter configuration is set up. So let's plug it in. And if the last students had reset it to factory defaults, we should get the QSM menu. As you can see, we are reading some type of a value here on our display and we are not in the QSM menu, so that means that we are going to have to uh, set ourselves back up for the QSM menu. So I'll walk you through the procedure for getting to the QSM reset. First, hold the left arrow and the parameter key down to get into the setting menu. And we were, will scroll across to the right until we get to the uh, MSYS setting here. We'll press set and go down a couple presses until you see QSM and there it is and it's showing off. So we're going to press set to change that to on. Press set and from this point we need to cycle the power on the controller. So let's do that. When we power this back up again it will start out in the QSM menu or the quick set menu with any luck anyway. So there we are, QSM is flashing yes, and we agree with that, so let's do that. Control type is PID, which is what we're after. Input type, uh, in this case, for this simulator is uh, a type K thermocouple, so we're gonna leave that in there. You may have to change it uh, from four to 20 to K1, so you'll have to get into that setting and, and scroll up or down until you find it. Our unit here, uh, degrees Celsius, is already set up. It may be uh, none from a previous lab, so you may have to press set in order to change that to Celsius. Our range high uh, is automatically populated uh, by the controller based on the type of thermocouple that we selected in the previous setting. Um, but we are going to change this uh, for the sake of this lab. Uh, to an operating range that we can work with. So we're going to pick range high of 600 degrees. So in order to do that, we'll press the set button and you'll see we're starting to blink. 
and we simply move left or right to get to the uh, correct uh, position and the up or down arrows to set it. So we'll just quickly set this to 600. And you may have to fiddle around a little bit to get there, but there we go, 600, we'll press set. Go down to our range low, which in this case we're going to set for 180 degrees. So let's go into there and change that to 180 degrees. And depending on which uh, decimal location you go to, it will scroll through faster or slower. So if you're on the single digits and you press the up and down arrows, it'll take a long time. If you go over to the 100th position, uh, you can change it right away. So here we go, we're now positive 170, 180 degrees for range low set, and we're going to call that good. Our output in this case here is set at output 2, which is milliamp output, which is what we're going to stay with. That'll be standard for most situations to uh, drive our final control elements. Cycle time, uh, we're not going to change. Um, if we wanted to simulate a slower process or a faster process, uh, we could change this value, but for what we need to demonstrate, we're just going to leave it. Exit. Sure, we're done. So let's click yes. And there we go. You can see on the top here, we're reading a PV. Uh, here's our set point, which is at 180 degrees. And it's doing its thing. So it's going to uh, hopefully try to find uh, 180 degrees on its own. Uh, how fast it gets there depends on what the P, I, and D parameters have been set to. So we left off after configuring the controller for the temperature simulator. We're now at a point where we have to select some baseline values for our uh, control algorithm uh, for PID. So we're going to go in to do that right now. Uh, if you remember from the previous video, we can do that by pressing the function button. And that gets us into our settings. Here we have a P which is sitting at 5 right now, which if you recall, um, for this controller is actually proportional band. So we want to be 100 over PB. So that tells us that we have a gain of uh, 20, I believe, is what we're looking for there. But we're going to change this uh, down to like 0.1. So let's go down to 0.1 with our P. And to make things simple, we're going to turn off the integral and derivative uh, functions. So press set to accept that function again. Oops, sorry. Uh, scroll down to get our uh, integral value. We're going to change that. I'll go over to the 200 here to make it quicker. And you'll see we can select off. So we'll do that. We'll go down and do the same for derivative. And you can see I'm going down by single digits here. If I go to the 10 spot, I can go much quicker. So there we are, off. So that's our PID settings. Um, as we have it right there. So now we can exit by pressing the display button. And we can see now that it's reacting a little bit faster than it was when we initially started. And we can test that by changing our set point. So let's change our set point to something like 400 degrees. And I think that's what it says in your lab. So that's what we're going to do. So there's 200, 300, 400. And as soon as I press set, you'll see that the controller is going to respond to the set point change. So you see now it's quickly rising uh, with her proportional set at 0.1. And if you do the math, uh, 100 over 0.1 gives us a very large gain. And you can see that the controller is responding very quickly to our set point change. You can see now that our controller is hovering around its uh, 400 degree set point change. So it is, in fact, controlling our simulated process. Uh, we can achieve tighter control through uh, different types of tuning, which we will learn about later on in this course. From this point, now we have our basic functions taken care of. We are going to go back into our parameter settings 
and set up a couple of uh, alarm values, which is one of the features of a single loop digital controller, which is basically a single loop PLC. And we're going to go in there and set up a couple of alarm points so that we can uh, demonstrate um, the display change um, when we uh, reach an alarm level. So we can set up the controller to have the PV change color if we're in an alarm state. So we will go in to do that next. All right, we now have the controller uh, holding near our set point of 400 degrees and you can see by the large gain here that it's not tight and holding it right at 400 degrees but it's going a little bit over and a little bit under. What we want to do next is set the controller up so that we can have an alarm on a low temperature. So in order to do that we are going to go into the menu and configure some more stuff. So let's start out by hitting the parameter button for a few seconds and we're just going to scroll through here to ope.mAlarm and we want to make sure that this is set for 0 2. The 2 represents a low alarm and just to show you we can have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, lots of different numbers there but we're interested in 2 so let's set that. We'll back out by pressing the parameter button. Now we want to find ope.m uh, M S P, I believe. So let's go and see if we can find that. And there's OPMSP. Let's go in there. And we want to scroll down from this point to find out our A1 value or our alarm 1 value. And we want to change that to oh, 300 degrees. So let's do that. You see, once you get to 10, if you scroll over, you can speed up life a little bit. Once you get to 100, you can scroll over and speed up life a little bit more. So that's set as well. And we'll press display to back out of that. So now we have the controller set up so that we'll alarm at uh, 300 degrees Celsius. But we also want to set it up so that this display will change color to give a visual indication that we're actually in alarm uh, beyond just having the alarm output relay kick in. So in order to do that, we're going to go into the uh, deepest menu by holding parameter and select. And we're going to try to find set M display. So let's scroll through here. There it is, set M display. We'll press set. And what we're looking for here is this PCMD parameter. And we want to make sure that this is set at 2. And this one is set at 2 already, so we're good with that. So let's press display to exit out of that and see what happens. Let's change our set point to a value less than our alarm set point, which was 300. So let's set it down to, oh, let's go 270 and press enter. Let's watch and see what the controller does. With any luck, it should turn red at 300 degrees. I'll come back in a minute. Oh, there it is already. So you can see that once we drop below our low set point of 300 degrees, the display changed to red, which gives the operators uh, a visual indication that they are in fact alarm. Let's change our set point now to a higher number and make sure that that alarm clears itself. And it does. So that is the basic setup for a, a temperature control loop with a lower alarm set point. Um, if you want to take this a little bit farther, there is a manual in the book rack uh, in the lab and you could also set it up for a high set point um, as well. But that is how we connect for a simple temperature loop and you will be getting uh, more intimate knowledge of all the PID uh, control settings uh, in some further labs. See you all later.